In this video, we're going to discuss the graph of uh, different square root and uh, a couple of cube root functions. Uh, the first thing to know is what the graph of the square root looks like. So if you have the graph of the square root of x, it looks roughly like this. <clears throat> um, you can kind of like visualize it as like half, it's like half of a parabola since the square root of x is the inverse of x squared. That'll be talked about in a different segment. But anyway, the square root of x uh, starts, looks like this. It's a function. Um, it starts at zero. And that's because if you tried to put like negative one or negative two or negative three, any negative number into the square root, that's not allowed. So because zero is the first x value that's allowed, the graph always starts at zero. And you know, when x is one, y is one, and then when x is two, or when x is four, y is two, way out here, and um, and so forth. So the graph looks like this. <clears throat> uh, for starters, the domain of the graph is all real numbers that are bigger than or equal to zero, and that's because on the x graph that we start here and we go right. So there's graph to the right. <clears throat> there's not graph back here. For the range, y is going to start at zero also and go up. There's no, you know, the, the square root of four is not negative two in this case. It's only positive two. That's one thing that's required to make this a function. Uh, so the graph, the range is all real numbers that are larger than zero as well. Um, this uh, graph touches the x-axis uh, and the y-axis right there only. Um, one thing that you... Uh, can do is you can move this graph left and right up and down. We'll, I'll show you how to do that. And then uh, the intercepts might change and also the, do the domain will change a little bit. Um, before we continue, uh, let's just also talk about end behavior. End behavior is what happens as we go to the far right this way and what happens as we go um, maybe to the far left, which there's not a far left in this case. What about going up? What happens there? Uh, the end behavior here as x goes right, that's right, then y goes up. So as x goes right, y is going up. It gets it goes up more and more slowly all the time, but it does go, keep going up. Um, let me take the square root of x and move it around a little bit. If you have a graph like this, uh, square root of x plus 3, that is going to be the exact same graph, except the base is going to start here, and it's going to look like that. The whole graph is just shifted up 3. If you want to shift it, this is right 2. If the changes left or right, you're going to find an x minus 2 or an x plus 3 or an x minus 6 or an x plus 8, something plus or minus inside the square root. Plus means left, minus means right. It's a little backwards from what you expect. So here, the graph looks like that, roughly. I'm, I'm drawing it roughly. <clears throat> if you want to combine these together, you get to have This would be left one and down two. And uh, it's gonna look kind of like that. Um, so uh, that's left one and then down two. So let's talk about the domain and the range of each of these. The domain is what x values are on the graph here. It starts at zero again and goes right. So the domain here is all real numbers bigger than or equal to zero. Uh, the range here, this time we start at three and we go up. Last time we started down here, but now we've shifted up three. So the range has shifted up three to be three and bigger. For this graph, 
the domain is we've shifted right to, so it's two and right. So it's going to be all real numbers bigger than or equal to two. And then for the range, the range hasn't changed. It's still zero and up. So it's going to be all real numbers bigger than zero. Um, here, this is moved left. So if you talk about domain and range again, the domain is negative one and to the right. So it's going to be all real numbers bigger than or equal to negative one. And then it shifted down to negative two. So the range is going to be negative two and up. So that's how that the shifting left and right uh, impacts the domain and the range. The domain and the range shift left and right up and down along with the graph shifting. Um, uh, so uh, let's uh, uh, take uh, another uh, graph here. We'll do y equals uh, the square root of uh, x minus 3 plus 1. Oh, there we go. Let's just draw that on the on the on the page real quick. So we're going right three and up one. So that graph is completely away from all the axes. It starts right here, it goes away. And so this graph has no intercepts. That means it does not cross the x-axis, it does not ever cross the y-axis. Let's do this one. That's created x plus 4. That is a graph that starts, it's going left, 4 right that, and then it goes you know, kind of through that direction. This graph has a y-intercept, right? It's right here. We just need to figure out what that is. So the thing about a y-intercept is you always know the x is 0 uh, and vice versa for an x-intercept. So if you put in x is 0 here, you can say, hmm, what is y when x is 0? Square root of 4 is 2. That y-intercept is 0, comma 2. So now you can see that, well, this is 1, that's 2. That's my y-intercept. Uh, if you had a graph like this, Do square root of x, uh, and uh, then we'll just do uh, minus 2, and we'll do, a, uh, yeah, that'll work. Okay, we'll just do square root of x minus 2. So go down, we're going to go down 2 and have this graph go like, like that. You can see now this graph has an x-intercept, or it's also called a zero. And one thing about the x-intercept is you know that x is unknown, but the y has to be zero because it's even with right there. Uh, so what you do is you just plug in zero for y. That's all for x. So add two to this other side, and you get square root of x equals two. And uh, then you square both sides, and you see that this is actually going to be the 0.4 comma zero. So that would cross at, at 4. Uh, so that's how you find the x and y intercepts. Uh, otherwise, this is a very uh, simple type of exercise. You take the square root graph, move it left and right, up and down, think about the intercepts. Um, the uh, last thing I'll, I'll mention is the cube root graph. The cube root graph looks... Kind of like that. And uh, if uh, x is the cube root of 8, you know, over here, then y is 2. But if x is uh, negative 8, what's the cube root of negative 8? You know, maybe that's right here. Maybe that's negative 2. So all the same principles apply to the cube root graph. You can move it left or right, up or down. In this case, the end behavior, as x goes right, y goes up. As x goes left, y goes down. Uh, the domain and the range, because this goes right forever and left forever, the domain is all real numbers. 
Also, since this goes down forever and this goes up forever, the range is all in limber. So a little bit of a difference there in the domain and range, but all the other main features work the same.